Hey, welcome back to Accidental Science, Claudio here. Today I'm going to talk about a scary topic, electromagnetic pulses. So we'll look at what they are, where they come from and how to protect our equipment from them. Stick with me. So as the name implies, an electromagnetic pulse is a pulse of energy that is transferred through an electromagnetic field kind of radio frequencies. But the difference here is that the electromagnetic pulse has a range of frequencies uh, and you can draw a, a parallel with the ocean. You can imagine the ocean with the waves, uh, as the radio waves, uh, and uh, a tsunami as the uh, electromagnetic pulse uh, which, uh, with a huge wave, uh, maybe made of several waves. EMPs are divided into three classes. E1, E2 and E3 and this depends by the speed it takes uh, to reach uh, the peak of the pulse. Uh, so E1 are extremely fast brief pulses that takes uh, 5 nanoseconds to reach the peak and lasts uh, about uh, 200 nanoseconds. E2 pulses uh, takes 1 microsecond uh, and lasts maybe 1 second and the E3 are slow, very slow and takes uh, 10 seconds to reach the peak and lasts hundreds of seconds. Naturally occurring sources are lightnings, corona mass ejection from the sun and meteors. Lightnings are the most important source of EMPs as they happen quite often. It is caused because the huge motion of charges that accumulate in the clouds creating an electric field that ionizes a channel through which this charge happens. When it happens, the electric field collapses and a magnetic field is generated. These EMPs can cause several kilovolts of induced voltage in long cables. Corona mass ejections happen at the surface of the sun and they project high energy particles that displace the Earth's magnetic field, making a way for cosmic radiation to reach the upper atmosphere that causes ionization and so the creation of electric fields that mostly influence very long power lines. In between naturally occurring and man-made are electrostatic discharge. You know, you are charged electrostatically, touch a, a faucet and tuck, you have a shock. That is a simple small electrostatic discharge example. And man-made are switching power circuits, uh, um, you know, power lines that switches and have a surge of voltage uh, and uh, electric motors uh, when you have the brushes that uh, sparks inside the electric motors, uh, the sparks of the um, engine, uh, the petrol engine car. Another man-made uh, EMP source is nukes. Yes, nuclear explosions at high atmosphere can generate EMPs, very large EMPs, and the E1 pulse is the only one known pulse that can be generated through a nuke. And this uh, EMP caused by uh, a nuke detonation is intriguing because it is generated by the gamma radiation which is uh, electrons, uh, high energy electrons, uh, and that uh, are curved by the Earth's uh, from their trajectory from the Earth's uh, magnetic field. Uh, and uh, well, okay, I'm not a particle physics uh, expert, so I can't uh, explain you uh, this uh, phenomenon, but it's quite interesting. Besides the effect of the nuclear de detonation, it's quite interesting. Phenomena. Clearly, uh, electromagnetic pulses uh, can induce very large voltage uh, and uh, current uh, in uh, electronic and electric and electronic circuits. Uh, so, what we can do to protect uh, our equipment uh, from them? But every circuit has its own input, output, and uh, obviously the uh, a source of power. And, um, and uh, through these lines uh, it is possible that uh, uh, a surge of voltage uh, caused by the EMP could be induced or a current that translates into voltage uh, could be induced uh, on these lines uh, that connected to the outside world of the circuit. And uh, the very same circuit inside uh, could be uh, subjected to this to this pulse of energy uh, through this uh, the the internal conductor of the PCB. 
even though small uh, traces, uh, small PCB um, are less prone to be uh, subject to this uh, surge of pulses because uh, you know the large, the longer the wire it is uh, like a, an antenna it can pick up much higher energy than a smaller trace inside a PCB. Also we have to consider that uh, the, the parasitic capacitances that could be uh, between the, the, the wires and uh, ground um, that uh, could curb in some way uh, the, the surge uh, of uh, voltage, uh, maybe the fastest rise in voltage uh, um, of, the, of the pods. So uh, this parasitic capacitance can help a little bit uh, to, uh, to to smooth out uh, the pulse, but undoubtedly uh, a protection uh, to the input parts of the circuit is important. How we can do this? So this is a uh, metal oxide varistors or varistors <laughs> and they can protect uh, uh, from uh, surge voltages uh, of the, in the circuits uh, in circuits for example we have this one that is marked 20k 275 and this one is uh, similar has the same marking so we will look at the uh, specifications so this is the burn burns uh, resist uh, varistor the ma number here, the 20D271K, uh, is uh, has a, a 175 volt uh, um, RMS, uh, 225 volt DC. This this is the continuous voltage uh, that the the unit is able to withstand. This is the rated voltage for AC and DC. It is the voltage at which the varistor is meant to work without tripping. The varistor voltage is a classification of the varistor at a current of 1 mA. This is the rated single impulse current at a ratio of 8 over 20 microseconds. It is the current that the varistor is able to withstand for a single pulse. This is the class of current and voltage, giving the clamping voltage when the varistor is tripped. And this is the maximum energy, always tested for a ratio of 8 over 20 microseconds. And this is maximum parasitic capacitance, uh, which is relatively high, as you can see. And this is an important information. Uh, it is the response time. As you can see, it is pretty good. It is 25 nanoseconds. Uh, maximum and typically it is 10 nanoseconds now this is another Chine chinese manufacturer and the uh, typical response time is less than 15 nanoseconds but if we are interested in a faster response and uh, lower capacitance uh, uh, the uh, transit surge protection uh, diode could be um, a solution such as this one that have uh, that has uh, two picofar, the typical uh, capacitance, uh, and uh, can withstand uh, 80 amps, uh, uh, 5 over 50 nanoseconds, uh, and um, and uh, it is pretty fast. It's pretty fast. This is the test, the uh, standard test, uh, clamping voltage at 8 kilovolt. Uh, contact discharge uh, and this is the time in nanoseconds uh, um, the time of the pulse in nanoseconds uh. the first pulse the first spike is 100 picosecond and this is an example of a uh, circuit that uh, has uh, has installed the two uh, TVS they are connected to the inputs uh, of uh, an external data line and um, where the other inputs uh, are protected uh, through 
uh, regular uh, resistors and uh, and the diodes uh, are less sensitive to uh, spike in voltage. Okay, in conclusion, protecting our circuits or equipments from uh, EMPs is a challenge, but is doable. We have to look at the port of the circuit, uh, where the, there are ports that are sensitive to high voltage and, volt and ports that are less sensitive, but the less sensitive port should not be overlooked because they could carry high energy inside the circuit and destroy the circuit. So uh, even do those ports uh, should be um, considered. So for example, in 15 years uh, since I designed the circuit, uh, there are thousands of them out there, installed out there. They have been uh, likely hit uh, by uh, EMPs coming from lightning several times. But in two occasions, uh, the lightning struck directly the building where the units were installed. And this, uh, uh, these diodes uh, here, these TVS diodes here, got melted, uh, protecting the underlying circuits. Uh, however, through the, uh, port, uh, the power port, uh, the EMPs, the surge of energy, was so strong that uh, it passed through uh, the simple protection made by uh, a choke, a diode uh, and a fuse, uh, destroying completely destroying the power supply uh, sections of the circuit uh, and destroying the microprocessor. So there are many mysterious ways a surge of energy could find a path into your circuit. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please click like, subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when the, a new video is available because I don't post video in, on a regular basis. That's all folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.